In this video, I will again look at basic 3D visualization in QGIS, but this time I will focus on visualizing vector objects. So not just taking a auto photo and draping it over a surface model, but taking buildings and adding them to my 3D visualization. So at the end of the, of the video, we will hopefully have achieved something like um, this, where we have the original settings, so the buildings, um, existing buildings, and then we have this um, new building I have designed and placed into my visualization. So let's see how this is done in QGIS, where we um, start out with the standard tool. So we have um, a terrain model, a surface model, and this urban surface model I created in another video. This is a surface model inside the buildings. And I've also added buildings, but this time as single um, shapes. My buildings I've been working with until now have been multi shapes, but Apparently, there's problems with the 3D plugin if I do too many strange things with multi shapes. So, here, buildings as a single shape and then a auto photo. So, we just basically our simplest solution would be, of course, to go to our web and start a plugin. Say, we would like to work based on a flat plan. So, just give us this rotatable thing <clears throat> that we can have our things on. And then in my buildings, I will say that they have to be extruded. Absolutely. And let's say they all have to be uh, 30 meters tall. And then add them. And then I have my usual environment with 30 meter tall buildings on it. Okay, that's not really that interesting because not all the buildings are 30 meter tall and there's other things we like to do. So let's um, leave this for a moment. Let's turn these off, these off. So let's see what we can do. First of all, what we really wanted to do is that we wanted the buildings to have a height that represent their real height. So we need some way of calculating this. In order to do this calculation, well, what we need is that we have to take our urban surface and subtract that from the terrain model so that, that we have the height of the individual buildings and not just how high they are over the sea level. Immediately, in this case, matter that much but for the sake of demonstration so first step is to do that calculation so that must be a raster calculator so um, calculator where we can take our dsm and subtract the dtm from it so that should give us a billing now maybe i don't want to do that one maybe i want to have my urban surface now on how I have it, uh, minus my DTM. So, and uh, reference layer, be my urban surface, and run. So, now I have the height of the buildings. What you can see is if I zoom in here, they have different blodges. And if I look on the auto photo, um, you can see these are mobile antennae and strange things on the roofs. We really don't want them to be part of our calculation. This type of data is always dirty and has lots of things in it we like to get rid of. So I like to filter out all of those small things. And there is a tool that we can use, which is, remember from the general video on raster tools, we can do a neighborhood analysis. So if um, we look up the manual for the our neighbor, so this is our, our neighbor. So what it does is it can take a matrix 
three by three in this case, or it could be five by five or whatever you want. And then you can do, do a calculation and then we'll write that calculation into the center. So in the, instead of using the average for doing the smoothing out, I generally prefer to do a median. So basically going off one by one, the highest and the lowest until we get to a median value. It, it tends to be a more efficient way of getting rid of these artifacts. So back in QGIS, I can run my R neighbor. So my R neighborhoods, it's going to be run on my output layer from before. So the building height. And what I want to do is I don't want to do the average. I want to do the median. And instead of having a block of two, three by three, I will do it on a block of five. So it will take the median with the, that block of five and write into the center cell. And I'll just run this tool. So, and what we can see in this layer is the blodges that we had before. If I look in my original output layer, we have these all these blodges. They have all been filtered out, smoothed out a bit. So I have a more clean, with less detail, if you wish, surface. Then I want to know what is in each of my buildings. So in each building here, I want to know this is a building. Ah, uh, good. So we're in this building. What is the elevation? So how tall is this building? Again, remembering back to the video on raster operations, we talked about zonal operation. So this is a typical use of a zonal operation where we have this building defines a zone and we then want within that zone to calculate a elevation data. So we have our from our neighborhood data set, we have the elevation data, the buildings will generate our zones. I'll just make sure nothing is selected, always um, a tricky thing if you have that. And one for our zonal statistics. So there is a tool called zonal statistics that does exactly this. So we want to have our output. So that's our filtered layer up there. Sorry, not the output, the filter version of it. And then we want to take our buildings and it will then add an attribute series of attributes and all of these, they will have a prefix of an underscore. And here I can choose which attributes I just give all of them. Probably only be needing some of them, but we'll just give all of them. So that will generate a new attribute in our buildings that have a prefix followed by some minimum, maximum, and so on. So I'll just run my tool. And so if I now use my eye tool on my sure I'm looking at the right layer, this one, we would see that it now has a series of attributes over here. So it has a max of 25 and a minimum of zero and so on. So it has a lot of different values. So always in the edges, there might be some problems with it is touching the surface. Therefore we have a zero there. Um, we could avoid that by using a buffer, but this case, we just don't really matter so much because we want to use other max. So if I, yeah, so I'll use the maximum or use um, the median as the two. So the maximum will still have some high things. Median will be a bit cleaner in many ways to use. We'll see the differences. So basically, I'm now ready to visualize my 3D buildings based on their real height. 
So uh, now I can go back to my. Um, first, I may remember that this uh, tool that um, we use looks at what I see. So I might as well just tidy this up here. So it my default view is more or less um, the one I have here. I could perhaps leave in the buildings. Okay. So um, go to my login. Say I would like to use again my DTM as my surface. And uh, we see that we zoomed in from what we had before. And this time I'll go in my property of my building, say you're excluded, it'll be relative to the DTM. And they'll be excluded by a expression. Let's start by taking the maximum. That. So now they will be excluded by the maximum height found from the zone statistics. So add the building and I get a result. So I'll just uh, zoom a bit out in my main window because those two, they are linked. And wait for it to do the calculations. Oh, I nearly forgot something really important. That is, um, if we look in our case here, we have buildings outside our height model. So we have buildings of and no data in their elevation. And if that's the case, um, the plugin will just hang on it. So we'll just have to first filter our data. So we will say, go in and filter on our, it doesn't really matter, whatever. Max must be larger than zero. So basically just filter out all no data. So only buildings that have data in it will be included. So now we can uh, go back, start our login, and look at the settings of our buildings. So what our setting of the buildings must be is that they have to be extruded relatively to the terrain model, and that they are extruded not on a fixed number such as 20 I did before, but based on a attribute, so in this case, max. So now we will generate my models. So that buildings have different heights based on the max height within the from the building height data set. So that way we can um, create more realistically viewing or what we should say more informative views. And we can here demonstrate how we have buildings on top of our surface. And of course, I could increase the surface quality after that in a moment. Um, so what I really want to do is now I want to um, take out a existing building. So I'll just close this one down and say that I have my buildings and is this building I want. So first of all, I'll in my surface model, I'll need to remove the urban surface, set that back to the DTM within this building. And then I can then add a new building. I just basically will add this as an new building. So first of all, we need to get rid of the surface model data underneath here. So in order to do that, I will um, take my building and I'll just select this one building. Um, there's always a bit, you know, if we've seen there's a bit of, of distance around where they're not quite clean. So I'll just buffer this one. Um, which also has an advantage of it being transformed to a single layer. So I'll just say buffer. And I'll just buffer it by, uh, let's say, one meter. 
and I'll do it in there. And I'll only do the selected one. So now I have this building on itself, and I want to use that to switch out my urban surface with my terrain model. So I'll do the same trick as I did when I created my urban model. So I'll convert this to a rack, a 01 a raster layer, and then use the raster calculator to bring the DGM in where this building is. So in our processing tool, we'll go rasterize. So rasterize somewhere down here. Um, take a my buffer, write a one where I have the buffer, write them in geographic. I know that they are 40 by 40 centimeters. Sorry, 40 by 40 yeah, centimeters. I want to have the output extent to be the same as my original urban surface. I can put in a minus 99 as no data to avoid the zero as a no data. And I'll set zero everywhere. So pre enter zeros, and I might as well just save it as a integer. So hopefully that's right. So we have this layer that covers it all and has a one there. What I want to do is that I win this building here. I want to have it that I will replace my urban surface, this layer here. I will replace that with my DTM. So in the DTM, the buildings are removed. And I want to do that within that where that one building is. And everywhere else, I want to keep my urban surface. So the trick that we have used before also to create the urban surface is to use the raster calculator. And this rasterized is my new building. So I can say where my rasterized, that's one where the building is. So I will multiply that of the DTM. And then outside the building, I will add where that my build my rasterized layer here is equals to zero. So that's outside the building. Oh, zero. And here I want to multiply this with my urban surface. So inside my building, this where this one is one. I will use my DTM. Where that one is zero, so all of this will be zero. I'll use my and this one is zero and add and multiply it with the urban surface. So that should give me, we'll, we'll remove this building from my urban surface layer. I just want to set my reference layer to urban surface, and that should be that. So magically, I have now removed this building from my urban service. So I now have a new urban service. Let's see layers there. Uh, I better start renaming things here. So this one I will call uh, new urban. Good. So. I can now visualize my auto photo drape on my layers like before. So there, yeah, say I want to use my new urban as my base layer and want to give it a full like that. So hopefully. Um, if I go zooming in here, bring up full screens easier. You can see that I have flattened out that building. Of course, it's still there on the auto photo, but in my terrain model, it's gone. 
so I can um, generate some visualizations about that building. So now we just need to insert our new artificial building, our plan building. For sake of simplicity, I'll just use my buffer layer here. So I'll just uh, drag my buffer layer up here. So that will mask over on my image. So if I now look in my here, you will see I have masked the area where I had my building. It's been masked out by the screen one. And basically what I want to do now is I want to take my buffer again. My uh, and this time I would say, okay, I want to make a building here. That is relative to the student, relative to my ETM. And I want to extrude, let's say I want to make a 45 meters high building, a tall building here at this point. And add this to my visualization. And just to make this look nice, uh, I will add the zoom level. And we'll just wait for it to update. So once it's updated, um, I have my gigantic building here. Um, made it in my town. Probably be a bit more architectural if I tell people that this is something that is imaginary. So I just set the opacity to let's say 60, so it's uh, semi-transparent. And now I have made some visualization that um, includes the original surface, the also photo draped on the original surface, where I have removed my building and added this new architect drawing of a new building that we can place. And considering its size compared to St. Mark's Church, uh, I don't think this building will have a planning permission. Um, no, 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 I don't think so. So I um, hope this um, was useful video on the basics of taking and combining the existing environment with a new designed environment. And uh, hope to see you in another video. Bye.